Okay, so it's time to get this guy finished. I need to do a little bit of surgery on him to sort of get the joints working the way that I want them to. There's a couple of the joint sections that I'm not particularly happy with, namely the hands and feet. Uh, I feel like they need to be a little bit looser. And the knee joints and hips need to be a bit tighter. Whilst I've got him chopped up like this as well, I'm going to be adding in some muscle implants into a couple of areas where I think he needs a bit more bulk. Uh, his biceps and forearms need a little bit more and the front section of his legs need to be beefed up as well. The other thing that I'm doing is adjusting the angle in the ankles. I've found that the PVC pieces that I've used, I used two 90 degree pieces which got the foot flat to the ground, but in making allowances for his stance, I found that that angle is too harsh. So I'm swapping out one of those 90 degree pieces for a 45 degree piece. And at the same time, I'm making that ankle joint a little bit more flexible. This is that section I was talking about where I was beefing up the muscles. Once these bits are put in place, as before, I can stitch up those joints and then silicone over the top of them. Just a quick breakdown to let you know where we've got to as far as this point's concerned. We started out with the vinyl kit, which is the static model, and I got that put together in a fixed pose position. A little bit of a modification with the mouth so that the mouth was open and it was showing some teeth. From there, that became my reference guide for working out the articulated version. Once I had the underlying skeleton, I fleshed it out with foam and pillow wadding, and then I used stocking material to hold that firmly in place whilst I started going over it with the layers of silicon. I then used a technique of transferred copy molded pieces that came off the original along with individual sculpting pieces that blend those elements together. And then I just built it up layer by layer until I started getting those skin textures that I was happy with. Along with working on the paint details, I'll be also working on the smaller details like his claws. I'm just using a regular yellow nail polish here and I'm painting it over the epoxy putty that extends out from his fingers and toes to form the claws. I'm also going to try and mix up some of the silicon in that yellow colour to match the areas around his jawline and the other bony areas of his body. In the last video in this series, you saw me doing the painting of the static version of the Gremlin, and that's what I'm sort of working on as far as the baseline colouring and shading that I'm going to be carrying over into the silicon version. There's going to be a little bit of difference in colour because trying to get an exact match in silicon as opposed to the acrylic paints is a little bit difficult, but it's mostly that reptilian sort of feel that I'm going for within the character. I'm going to put in some vein details over his ears and body that I think are lacking a little bit on the original. And once they're set in place, I can go over it with the final coat. The way you can see the veins there at the moment are far too prominent. And this final layer that I'm putting on should give a nice translucent effect that allows you to see the veins through and under the skin rather than just sitting on top.
Once that's all set and finished and he's given a final wipe down, this is what we've ended up with. I know the sculpting in it isn't quite as sharp and crisp as the original, but this was very much an experimental project to see what sort of level of detail I could just get out of this common corking silicon. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm quite pleased with the way I've been able to blend the colours in and I think the key features across his body match in pretty nicely. I'm going to do a companion video with this one later on that will go through what worked and what didn't work in terms of the silicon techniques that I've used and hopefully those sort of tips might help somebody out there who wants to take on a similar sort of project. In the meanwhile, if you'd like to know more information about it, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. I'm always happy to help where I can. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, talk to you next time.